This is the documentation video on how to get started with the procedural utopian buildings brought to you from the award winning animation The Utopian Metaverse. It is a pack of semi-procedural utopian buildings with fully customizability with infinite variation and trees as well. There are three geometry nodes generators with 11 default presets. You can even use your own assets. All the parameters can easily be modified from the geometry nodes modifier. Use the coupon code from the description box below to get 30% off for the first week. Now on Gumroad and Blender Market. After you have downloaded and unzipped the procedural utopian buildings for Blender by sujuobat.zip, there will be two blend files. The first is the procedural utopian buildings asset browser, which is for the asset browser so that you can drag and drop the assets in your own scenes. You do not need to open this blend file. The second is the procedural utopian buildings by Suju Ubad, which contains all the buildings and the assets if you wanna play around with or take a look at it. Now let's open up a new fresh blender scene and let's see how to get started with using it in your own scene. So let's start by deleting everything, then go to edit, preferences, then in the file pass, asset libraries, Click on this plus icon to create a new asset library and navigate to the folder where you have unzipped the procedural utopian buildings pack by CUOBAT. Open up that folder and click on add asset library. I've already done that so I'm not gonna do it again. And also don't forget to save the preferences. We can now close the preferences. Now let's open up the asset browser. Click on this drop down menu and choose the procedural utopian buildings pack by CG Bad. Now in the asset browser, you'll see multiple catalogs, each denoted by a different shape. The diamond shape denotes that it's an instance. The circle shape denotes that it's a building generator. And the square shape denotes that it's a building preset. If that doesn't make any sense, don't worry, it will later. There are three building generators provided along with a total of 11 default building presets. The first building generator type is the stacked building, used to create a stacked type of buildings like these ones. You can adjust the height, randomize the seed, scale, rotation, translation and more. The second is the high-rise building used to create high-rise type of buildings with height, length, with controls and more. The third is the DNA building used to create this Agora garden building that is twisted and animated. You can change the size of the icons from here. Now you can just drag and drop any building that you want in your scene. And when you do that, you'll notice that it also has brought some objects with it. And these are the objects used to create this building. But don't worry, these will not be rendered. But if you do want to hide them, you can click on this eyeball button. Or what I like to do is I like to create a new collection, call that instances. And from now on, I'm going to move all the instances into this instances collection. And I'm going to hide the instances collection. Now here is our building. You can go to the modifier properties and from here you can change all of these parameters like we can change the height of the building. We can also randomize the seed to get a random variation of our building. And if you are confused by all of these parameters, believe me it's not difficult. It's very easy. I've explained everything what each parameter does in the documentation. So do well to check it out from the description box below. Now, what we want to do is we want to add the trees. So before adding any trees, the first thing you gotta do is you have to go to the instances catalog and import the foliage instances into the scene. And these are the assets that we'll use to schedule the foliage on our buildings. 
You can move this to the instances collection as well if you want. Now these foliage scatters are the objects that we'll use to scatter the trees on our buildings. But the thing is that there's a different preset to scatter the trees on our buildings and we don't know which one of these foliage scatters is for this building. And that is why I've created dedicated folder for each building denoted by a square shape. So the building we are looking for is cubic stacked building 01 and here is cubic stacked building 01. Now let's import the foliage scatter into our scene. And it looks something like this, but don't worry, this will not be rendered as it says this is only visible in the viewport. But most importantly, there are no trees and we are going to fix that very easily. First, let's select this object, then this building and press Ctrl P to parent it to the building. So that if we move our building, it also moves with it. It's not necessary, but I like to do it. Now let's select this foliage scatter object and you'll notice that there are two modifiers. The first is for scattering the trees as it says tree scattering and the second is for scattering the plants. So let's maximize this modifier and the first thing we have to do is we have to define the target object on which we want to scatter the trees on. So let's select our building and press F2 to rename it, but we are not going to rename it, but instead I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy the name of it. Then in the target object, I'm going to paste that name and we can easily select that building. But still, there are no trees. And that is because animal proxy is set to 1. And if you don't know, in computers, 0 means off and 1 means on. So proxy is enabled. And if you don't know what's proxy, proxy is a method to replace high poly objects by low poly objects in the viewport to improve performance. And since proxy is enabled, but no proxy object is selected, nothing will be visible. So I've created and provided a few placeholders that you can use. So let's type placeholder and choose any of these placeholders that you like. I'm going to use the tree placeholder 02. And here are our trees. Now these low poly objects will be visible in the viewport, but the high poly trees will be visible in the renders. But if you do want to see the actual trees in the viewport, you can disable the proxy by setting it to zero, but be aware that this may be heavy on your PC or Blender may crash. I'm gonna enable the proxy. Now let's do the same for the plants as well. For the target object, let's choose our building. And for the proxy, I'm going to use the plant small placeholder. And there are our plants. And there are some parameters for scattering as well. And you can find what each of these parameters do in the documentation. Now we can move these foliage instances into the instances collection as well. Now let's try adding one more building. I'm going to add this building in our scene. So let's drag and drop this building into our scene. And when we do that, it also brings some instances with it. So let's move the instances into the instances collection. And these are the collections used to create this building. So let's move these into the instances collection. Now let's also add the respective foliage scatter into our scene. And because we have already added the foliage instances into our scene, we do not need to add it again. So let's drag and drop this foliage scatter into our scene. And let's shift select our building so that is the active one. Then by pressing Ctrl P, let's parent it to the building. Now in the geometry nodes modifier, we have to define the target object. So let's press this building, press F2 to rename it copy the name and paste that name in the target object and choose our building. For the proxy object, let's type placeholder and choose tree placeholder or two. And let's do the same for the plants as well. Let's choose the target object and choose the proxy object, plant small placeholder. And you can change all of these parameters to control the building. The link to the full documentation will be down in the description box below. 
So that's how to get started with the procedural utopian building spec. Now let's see how you can use your very own assets to customize the buildings. So here's what I've done. I've created a few very simple stories for the sake of this tutorial and I've put them in this cubes collection. Now let us duplicate this building and these trees as well by pressing shift D. Now we are going to customize this building. So if you want to use an object to create the building, you have to set this use a collection value to zero. So this is actually a switch. When this is set to zero, it's using an object to create the building. And since we haven't selected any object, nothing is visible. And when this is set to one, it's using a collection to create the building. But you have to keep a few things in mind when creating your own assets. So the first thing you have to keep in mind when creating your own stories or floors is if you are using a collection of objects, the scale of the objects on the Z axis or the Z dimension has to be the same. So if we take a look at the scale of this cube on the Z axis, is 3 meters and the scale of this cube on the z-axis is 3 meters as well. So they have to be exactly the same. And the second thing is that make sure that you have applied the scale. You can press Ctrl A and apply the scale. And the third thing is that the origin point of these floors has to be at the very bottom and if it's not you can do that very easily by going into edit mode selecting the bottom faces then pressing shift s and choosing cursor to select it now the 3d cursor is set to the center of this face now we can go to object mode and set the origin to 3d cursor now the origin point is at the bottom now let's do the same for this as well now we can use this collection to create our building. So let's select our building and in the story collection, let's type cube and use the cubes collection. Now as you can see that the floors are floating in the air and that is because we have to define what is the height of our story. So if we take a look, the height is 3 meters. So let's just type 3 in here. You don't have to type meters, just 3. Now this is working. And if you don't want to have random translation in your building, you can just set it to zero. And you can find what each parameter does by reading the documentation. But now, as you can see that there are no trees. And the reason is, if we select our foliage scatter object, you can see that it's using a vertex group to distribute the trees. And since we have no vertex group in our stories, the trees are nowhere. So let's copy the name of the vertex group that we are using to distribute the trees on because the name of the vertex group has to be exactly the same in order to get them to work. So let's press Ctrl C and copy the name. Now let's create a vertex group and paste the name. Now let's go to edit mode and assign this face to this vertex group. But when we do that, if you go to weight paint mode, you can see that the vertex group is also here. We can easily fix this by going into edit mode and by pressing I to insert the face. Now I'm going to select this whole edge loop and I'm going to remove this edge loop from this vertex group. Now if we take a look, this is looking great. Now let's do the same for this floor object as well. And let's go to edit mode and I'm going to select this loop and I'm going to press I to insert it and I'm going to create a new vertex group and paste the name in here and assign it to the vertex group. And for this floor, I don't want the trees to be here. I just want them to be here. Now, as you can see that this is working. And if you want to also control the scale of these trees, you can do that very easily from here. So that's how you can use your own assets to customize the buildings. But for these high-rise buildings, things are a bit different as the whole building type is very different from the others. So for this building, this is the collection of objects that I'm using to create the building. Now the most important thing when creating the walls or the windows for this building type is that the scale of the walls or the windows has to be 1 meter by 1 meter on the Z and on the X axis and the origin point has to be at the bottom center. 
and I have also assigned the face of this wall to the foliage vertex group to distribute the plants on the building. And to scatter additional objects like the balconies in this building, what I'm doing is I'm using this collection for the building and this collection for the balconies. But the origin point of the balcony is the same as of the window. Then I'm using that collection to scatter the balconies. So that's how to use your own assets to customize the buildings. And don't forget to read the documentation and use the coupon code from the description box below to get 30% off for the first week. Now on Gumroad and Blender Market. I'll be back.